The trillions of microorganisms living in our digestive tract are now rightfully enjoying their time in the limelight. Each of us has around a thousand different bacterial species in our gut. This makes our microbiome as unique as fingerprints. We are now beginning to understand how these microorganisms affect our health and well-being and how different types of organic and non-organic foods affect us and the microbiome. The food we eat has a major influence on our gut microbiome, that is, the microorganisms that live in our digestive tract. There are trillions of microorganisms in our bodies and the composition of our gut microbiome is unique and influences our health and well-being. It even affects how we think. In fact, in recent years, our understanding of the microbiome has expanded to the point that scientists refer to a gut-brain axis and they are investigating the role of the gut microbiome on our mental health as well as our physical health. As a food scientist, I'm particularly interested in how organic and non-organic foods interact with probiotics. These are microorganisms we consume alive and which then colonize our gut microbiome, enabling proper digestive processes and other essential functions. To be considered organic, fruit, vegetables and other food must be grown without artificial chemicals, including certain pesticides and fertilizers, and processed without additives or solvents. Organic standards vary around the world, but generally speaking, organic farming is intended to limit agriculture's impact on the environment and deliver a more natural product to the consumer. And organic food is popular. Sales increased 13% worldwide in 2021, and the shares of households buying organic food is expected to double from 2021 to 2025. Most people say they purchase organic products for the environmental benefits or even health reasons. But there could be other benefits too. So we research how organic food interact with and change gut bacteria to find out if the science matches the heart. But before we get to the results, we need to talk about how your gut works. Probiotics are beneficial live bacteria. They usually enter our bodies via foods like yogurt, sauerkraut, and kimchi. They help us digest food by breaking down fiber we can, making it more accessible to us. This fiber is known as prebiotics. So, probiotic enable us to benefit from the prebiotics in our diet. And the prebiotics in our diet feed the beneficial probiotic bacteria. The foods that carry probiotics and prebiotic foods can be produced by both organic and non-organic farming systems. Simon Lee, Anna Witwer and I undertook a research review to find out how food produced organically influences our gut microbiome. Although nutritional effects varied across different types of food, Organic farming appears to have a definite effect on the nutritional composition of foods. For example, some organic fruits and vegetables contain higher levels of phenolic compounds than non-organics. These phenolic compounds may be protective factors against cancer and heart diseases. And their beneficial effects on obesity, diabetes and other diseases are also reported in the literature. So what's going on here? One thing that may be causing this, that organic food is attacked by insects more. Previous research found more phenolic in pak choy that had organic pesticide used on it. And it was also more damaged by beetles compared to pak choy with conventional pesticides. It is a surprising possibility, but points to not the benefits of organics. By eating organics, you might reduce your exposure to pesticide residues and bacteria that have developed 
antibiotic resistance. Other nutritional differences can be seen in meat and milk when comparing organic and non-organic farming. For example, there are beneficial differences in the fatty acid profile of organic milk. Fat-soluble vitamins, including vitamin A and E, are higher in organic milk, while overall fat content seem to be lower as well. But only a few studies we examined focused on these nutritional differences and their impact on gut microbiota. Organic meat tend to contain similar or higher levels of minerals like iron, zinc, calcium and magnesium than non-organic produce. So that is promising, but at this stage we do not know if these differences affect the functionality of gut microbiota. We need more research in this area. In grains and cereals, organic farming practices seem to alter carbohydrate composition with more fiber and total carbohydrates. Previous studies have shown that this fiber supports the growth of probiotic lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species and is shown to beneficially alter the composition of metabolites produced by gut microbiota. Both total carbohydrate intake and the proportions of different types of carbohydrates eaten are associated with alterations to the gut microbiota. But the influence of organic or non-organic grains and cereals is still unknown. So, should you eat organic foods? You will have seen dozens, maybe even hundreds of news articles telling you about some new superfood or that a specific food is associated with lower cancer risk or better heart health or weight loss. If you listen to everything, you would find it overwhelming. While as scientists, we need more research to tell you that it's better for your microbiome. If you would prefer to eat organic for your health, go ahead and follow your gut. The key thing is to support your microbes by eating a balanced, healthy and varied diet with lots of low processed and fresh food. And if you are interested in organic farming or how our bodies interact with organic food, you could study a Master of Agricultural Sciences or Master of Food Science with us.